And some of the most recent news talking about COVID, of course, I had talked about this last time in one of my previous articles, probably from the Times of Israel, where they had stated that uh, the passport, of course, was only going to last six months. And as of October 3rd, that is the truth. As nearly two million Israelis lose green pass as new rules enter effect. And so a lot of these people who were pushed into the, you know, two weeks to slow the spread to just roll up your arm and everything goes back to normal to there is no normal. This is your new normal where you're going to be taking injections into your bodies against for the most part, most of these individuals against their will. Most of these individuals aren't doing this because this is the route that they want to live their life. This isn't the way they want to live their life. This is the dictates and the edicts coming down to them from their government. And of course, as a result, many of these individuals who realize I'm not going to be able to go to work, I'm not going to be able to travel, I'm not going to be able to do many of these other things in terms of interacting with society. And this is the result that you get. Now, I've spoken numerous times talking about this. And of course, even now there's been protests, even in New York, New York has been quiet for so long in America, for that matter, we should be having rallies and protests throughout the whole country months ago. But now people are starting to do a little bit of a pushback. But this isn't how you get there. Like I've said, France, uh, the UK, Italy, uh, Brazil, you know, all these countries have been going this route for quite some time. So they go out there with their signs and they say, you know, whatever chanting they're going to chant that doesn't work that doesn't work against authoritarianism especially because in many of these countries primarily in america you have people who are in favor of a mandate and so what do you do when you have a large portion of the population that is against it and you have a large population that is for it and these people who are for it won't leave these people alone it's not a scenario where you can say, you know what, we're both going to go our separate ways. We'll live over here. You go over there. That's not going to happen. And so when push comes to shove, well, then the government says, well, we're going to sell this and we're going to drop the hammer on everybody and everybody's going to take it. And either you're going to take it or you're not going to be able to work. You're not going to be able to feed your family. You're going to lose your job. And we've seen that in New York with some what was it, almost 70, 80,000 healthcare workers that opted to just say, you know what? I'll let you fire me. I'll go that route. And then the government says, well, okay, well, you're going to let us fire you. Well, then you're not going to be able to collect unemployment. And this is how evil the intentions are. And what do you do in that scenario? Protesting with a little sign is not going to cut it. And many are going to have to make the choice of, am I going to choose slavery or am I going to fight for freedom? Because that's at the end of the day, that is the that is what has to happen. People who want freedom, you have to fight for freedom. It's not given to you. Freedom is not given. As many uh, politicians or presidents that had came before us, that it's spilt by blood. Freedom is granted. It's not given to your ancestors, right? Through your genes, you can't pass it on to them. They have to fight for it. That's why I think it was Reagan that said that it's only one generation. The loss of freedom is only one generation away that those individuals have to be taught to fight for. In our day, because of socialism in America, that has gone on for the better part of decades, literally longer than I've been alive. I'm 43 this September. Longer than I've been alive, America has been a socialist nation. And so little by little by little, the government whittles away many of the things that you should do independently, that you should be responsible for yourself. One of the most important things that countries like Australia are finding is your own safety, where the Australians gave away their guns to the government and they said, you will protect us, right? The government said, we're not going to do anything bad. We'll protect you. You don't need the guns. We've got police officers. They'll come in on their white horse and they will save you. And now those people are literally going back to what Australia originally was, which is a penal colony where the people can't move. The cops are beating them up. On the street, you can check all, there's plenty of videos on social media, and Americans are headed in that same direction. The only difference is, of course, in America, where 
the people have guns. And so that's why you haven't seen that sort of forceful authoritarianism here in the government. They have to kind of finesse it. They've got to create a scenario, which is why I think it was most recently where you said that it had the CDC talking about that gun violence is now a, a health epidemic. And that's how they're going to whittle away Americans need to hold on to those guns. That's the last bit before the government here can look like the government over there. And as the article goes on to say, it says documents granting access to certain venues for those who have taken it and recovered are now only valid for six months after the last shot. And it says uh, as a result of the virus, this is the cabinet convened on Sunday for the first time. It says the new green pass rules took effect on Sunday with nearly 2 million Israelis losing their pass under the updated immunity guidelines due to, of course, not taking it. They said, I haven't taken, I'm not taking a booster. I'm immune. Even the studies show that their immunity is better than what they want them to take. Now, of course, for many of the individuals, whether you want to take it or not is completely up to you. But if you think it's because you can't pass it on, well, that narrative has been obliterated. If you think it's because we're going to go back to normal, well, look at, look at, Israel. Israel is a perfect example. You can just look at other countries and say, well, did, did everything work out well for them? And we can look at those individuals and be like, I don't want to be like them, right? Just like Australia. You look at those people, like those people gave away their guns. I don't want to go that route. I want to, I want to avoid that mistake. And that's part of wisdom. Wisdom is not just, you know, you learning from your own experiences and then being like, you know what? I ain't going to do that again. Wisdom is also looking at someone else and seeing the outcome for them and saying, you know what? I don't want to be like that. Like a young woman, she sees all her friends get pregnant, unwanted. They become single moms. And she says, you know what? I don't want to go that route. I want to go this route. I want to go the route where I have a family and a husband and a stable household. I don't want to be the single mom still running the streets, right? Whatever narrative it is that you want to talk about. People can learn not just from their own mistakes, but they can learn from the mistakes of others. And this is why it's also so important. The the adage, right, is like a proverb, right? Those who don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it. It's the same. It's the same thing. We instead of learning from the experience of the people that came before us, and then saying, you know what, we're not going to do that, right? Like the Jews. It's so weird that this is happening to the Jewish people because this is just like this happened to you not even a hundred years ago. You would think. That if they had learned from the people behind them, that they wouldn't be going through this right now. But unfortunately, they have not learned from history. And as a result of not learning from history, they are now repeating it. As it goes on to state, it says 1.9 million Israelis, between 1.7 and 1.9 million Israelis, according to the Hebrew media, it says at the same time, police will set up enforcement of proof, right? Show me your papers, right? Like literally, you know, your grandma didn't tell you about what happened back then and how the Nazis came forward and they were like, show me your papers. Where are you going? Who are you? It says all existing green uh, passes will be voided and all Israelis must receive new ones through the house ministry. And so this is the, the little goalpost where everybody thinks, oh, oh, we need to just do this. Do, just do this one more thing. Just do this one more thing. And everything's going to go back to normal. Hmm. Not for these people. They didn't go back to normal for these people. So what makes you think it's going to go back to normal for you? And this is why it's so important to value your freedom. But in America, because of so many of the social programs, because of the government, just kind of, don't worry about it. We'll take care of you. You don't, you don't want to go back to work. We'll send, you, we'll send you some money from home. Don't worry. We'll send you money while you stay at home. And, and you don't want to go out there. and You don't want to pay back your school debt. Don't worry about it. We'll take care of that. Right? You don't want to pay your rent. Don't worry about it. We'll take that. Right? You don't want to protect yourselves and learn how to use it, utilize a weapon for your own personal safety. Don't worry about it. We got you. And this is the result. Very a very similar system where that exists is jail. In jail, you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. Don't have to worry about your meals. You don't have to worry about work. You don't have to worry about where your clothing is going to come from. Don't worry about it. The government has taken care of you. And that's why Australia is a penal colony right now to this day. Right? That's where it started. And that's where it is because the people don't want to take responsibility. They've, they've abdicated all of their freedom. They've given the government all of their responsibility and what you're responsible for you have authority over right very similar to the mistake that men made instead of men 
keeping the responsibility for women and children. They said, here, you take it, government. Just 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 make us pay child support. Just make us pay alimony. And here we are. Right. Because men decades ago were fooled into thinking that they could still sleep around with women and, and do all these things. Hey, I don't have to be responsible for them financially. That's a great that's a great deal here. We'll give that we'll give that authority to the government. And now look where men are, right? For generation, this is why you don't see a lot of pushback from men because most men nowadays in America and in the West, for that matter, have no skin in the game, right? They don't have families that they have to protect. They have, that they have to protect for the most part. And this is why you don't see men becoming violent. It's because many, many, especially many single men, many single men my age, we realize they've got no skin in the game. So why should I put my neck on the line? for a system of things for a society that for decades has said i don't need no men men ain't shit right so now when the barbarian is at the gate there's nobody there to fight for freedom and this is why you don't go that route you learn from history and unfortunately the jews and many other nations are going to have to learn the hard way this isn't going to go away with protesting you're not going to get courts involved people are going to have to die that's the reality. That is just the reality. There is no talking our way out of this one. There's no information that's going to come up and people are going to be like, oh, OK, now I understand. Now we can go back. to. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen because the elites know what the outcome will be. If this all goes sour for them, they know that the people will rise up and it's the French Revolution all over again. So for them. For those in political authority and for those who are unseen, it's an all or nothing deal. Either we go all the way and we do what we got to do and we make these people submit or it's the end for us. And that's 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 that's, that's the reality. This is, this is today. People haven't realized it yet. The men of the nations haven't realized that this, unfortunately, is the route that it's got to go. Just look at Australia. As it says, all existing green passes will be devoided, says the renewal rules require those who recovered from the disease to get at least one dose. That's right. Just get that one dose and we'll give you the next pass. Then you got to take the next one a couple of weeks later and then six months later on and so on and so forth. And this is where the people of Israel are. It says the pass is only valid starting one week after receiving the last required dose for six months. So every six months, you got to roll up that sleeve every six months. This is where people are at. And this is what is referred to as slavery. When you no longer have bodily autonomy and you cannot go and come where you please without someone telling you, show me your papers, you are in essence have become a slave. And it's the government that is trying to enslave you. This ain't going to go away. It says the document held by those who did take it or who have recovered, it says, grants access to many public places and events, including restaurants and museums. Right. So if you want to do the things that you normally did before, well, then this is how we're going to this is how we're going to get you there. If you don't want to do that, well, then you can't go to any of these places. It says the temporary green pass has also been obtained through a negative test. It says which must be paid for unless the individual is not eligible to take it. It says Israel, the first country to officially offer a third, and they've already done that with over a third of their population. And of course, they're still having cases, but it has nothing to do with the cases and it has everything to do with you falling in line for what comes next. It says it began its campaign on August 1st, initially rolling it out, uh, rolling it out after the, excuse me, out to those over the age of 60. It then gradually uh, dropped the eligibility age. And of course, now it's for those 12 and older, 12 and older. And the same thing is happening here. And most recently, Dr. Uh, Dr. Fauci said the exact same thing for here, for people in America. Right. The FDA voted 16 to 2. No, no reason, no evidence, no evidence why uh, any of these people need to take it. And Dr. Fauci was like, yeah, don't, don't worry about them. We have the last say. And of course, Dr. Fauci foresees full right for, for before you either took the one dose from the J&J &J, or you took the one from Moderna or Pfizer and you were considered fully vaccinated. Dr. Fauci says, well, I know we told you that last time, but to go post, we just got to move it a little further out there. Right. We're going to put that little freedom out there on a carrot on a stick. And I said this before that the carrot on the stick eventually becomes the stick. 
where the state and if you think the police and the military are going to have any sort of uh, care for the people, just look at uh, what's his name, the, the lieutenant that he was out there outspoken. What the government is doing is wrong. Letting all those people die, letting our own soldiers be killed. What they did was wrong and there should be accountability. Who was it that had arrested him? Was it Nancy Pelosi? Was it a politician that came and took him off the jail? No. It was his brothers in arms, right? His brothers in arms, as they say. And those very same brothers are now going to try him for crimes that he's committed, right? So if you think that police officers, the problem is, is the good ones leave. And this is the whole point of what the government was doing. <coughs> Excuse me, in that video where I talked about is the government going woke? Or is the military going woke or is something else happening? And I'll link it up top. But everything that's been happening, especially within the military and within police, is just a weeding out process. They're just weeding out people who are not going to fall in line. They weed out people who are not going to be 100 percent on our side. And that's why what happens when the, when the good police officers leave, they're like, you know what? I'm going to resign. I'm not going to be part of this. The same thing with the U.S. military. They said Joe Biden said the exact same thing. If you're not going to take it, well, we're going to we're going to discharge you. We're going to give you a dishonorable, dishonorable discharge. And it's because they don't care. They just need enough people to go full authoritarian and start utilizing force. It will happen. I guarantee you. It, it, it's history. History repeats itself to those who do not learn from it. And apparently America has not learned from history and we are going the same route and eventually the men of the nation will have to make a decision am i going to become a slave or am i going to fight for my freedom anyway i'm going to leave it there links for both articles will be down below feel free of course to like comment and subscribe and i will check you out next time thanks for watching